Hello friends, hello there. This is Electrical Awareness as usual and today I am coming to you with a very wonderful program and this program is a follow-up after I did a talk somewhere a few days ago and there was a question time and one of the questions that emerged was why are other people shocked more than others when they go to have a, an electrical shower? Or rather, why are other people sh shocked more than others when they have a shower with electrical shower heads? This is what is bringing about today's topic. And today's topic is electrical shock differ from one person to another. Number two, electrical shocks differ because of the time you hold on it before you reach the, the threshold of let go and so on and so on and so on. And so before we continue, you are welcome to subscribe to this channel, to share, to like and do a comment. By the way, my friends, you are not commenting uh, with questions. I have had a lot of encouragements, people saying this is good work, it is educative, good information and so on. Uh, but again, it's kind of limiting me because I may not do enough research if you do not ask questions about electricity. So ask questions, any question, even if it's coming from our previous videos, just ask questions and then I'll be able to answer those questions for you. And this will continue helping when it comes to electrical matters. Thank you very much. Electrical shock or electric shock is said to have happened when a person is part of electric circuit. So you are completing a circuit when you are shocked. So shocking means uh, you are completing a circuit. Now for a circuit to complete, it means there must be a live wire and a, and, and a return or, or a neutral. Now a neutral is completed by a return wire. This return wire goes back to the generation company, goes back to the nearby transformer. So when you are shocked by electricity, you become a load and at the same time you complete the circuit. So your body is the one that is returning neutral to the nearby transformer. Now that is how shock happens. In layman's language, electricity lights by having two wires that is neutral and live so when you are shocked it means you are touching on live and then you as a body you as a person is the neutral is the neutral returning electricity to the nearby transformer or returning electricity to the source that is how circuit is completed so when you complete the circuit then you are said to be shocked. Now, the major factor on whether you are going to be shocked very badly, mildly or less depends on the resistance of your body. Resistance increases to help. When resistance is, is, is more, it means you are not going to be shocked a lot. But if your resistance is low, that means you are not resisting current to flow through you. So it flows through you and then you are shocked. So resistance of the body is what determines how you are going to be shocked. That is number one. So how is your body resistance? Resistance on the, of, the, of the body depends on the following. It depends on whether you are touching electricity with bare hands or with gloves, for example. It is very possible for you not to be shocked just because your hands are, on the, are not exposed. You have done 100% resistance by wearing gloves. So when you wear gloves or if you have gloves on, then you are not going to be shocked. Okay. But you can be shocked just a little if you have dry hands, for example, compared to having wet hands. If you have wet hands, you will be shocked more than having dry hands, given that you are going to touch electricity with your hands. So that is the second point. But now we are talking about hands.
So it is possible for you not again to be shocked more severely depending on where electricity is entering to your body. Is it entering through your hands? Is it entering through your ears? Or by paradventure, it may enter through your tongue. That's a very fatal accident. It's very possible for you to have an accident where your tongue has touched a wire, for example. Then the tongue has little resistance. It means you'll be shocked more and more, more than others. Other things depend on things like the size of the body and health. Now, I want to go through the main things that are uh, shock depends on number one the part through which electricity enters your body okay when you touch electricity by say your hand when it is not wet then it is lesser shocking than when you touch through the tongue for example number two the time the, the, the length of time through which you have held on the shocking wire that is number two. So when you feel a sensation of shock, I advise that you leave the wire immediately. Just let it go voluntarily. Though there's some point when you are shocked so much uh, because of earthing, because of multiple earthing, electricity returns back to you and then you are let go. So don't wait until you are let go by the mechanism of electricity, but instead try to let go by doing this thing, leaving it voluntarily, voluntarily on your own. Just leave it. Let it go. Your wire has, shocked, the wire has shocked you. Don't wait. Let it go immediately, if possible. So the part through which at the time you take uh, to hold on the shock will determine how serious, how severe are you to be. Are you going to be shocked? So number one. The point through which electricity enters your body, number two, the time you take. And then another thing is uh, your health. And another thing is the size of your body. And another thing is uh, the age. Now, I wanted to tell you now about the shower a little. How to avoid shower shocks. Number one. Anytime you hear about the sensation of shock when you are taking a shower, it means there's a problem with the earthing system in your house, in your premise, and eventually it means the shower is not earthed enough for protection purposes. Because one of the main things that uh, wire, uh, an earth wire does is for protection. So you need to make sure that your earthing in the house is done very well. Now, this is done by employing electricians to help you do that. That is number one. When you are shocked again, we have mild shocks. So the most important thing you have to do, even if there is wire, uh, there is an earth wire, don't go to the bathroom without your sandals on. Sandals are rubber, so they break. So we, we, we said when we were beginning that uh, when you are shocked, you are shocked because you are completing a circuit. So by putting on your slippers, your sandals on, it means you are not completing the circuit. So you will not be shocked. Okay. It is also advisable that you follow the procedural uh, activities when you are taking a shower. One, put on the switch of the shower when you are going to your to your bathroom that is why most of the switches are outside the bathroom after finishing to shower what you have to do you have to dry up your hands by your towel before you put off the switch now most of the people are doing this mistake of putting off the switch with their wet hands definitely you will be shocked because that switch has a live wire in it as a neutral wire in it, as an earth wire in it, so it will flow to you. Okay, it even becomes more severe because the water you have in your hand may in one way or another leak to the switch inside and then it, 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 it shorts the wires. So it is very important for you to dry up your hands for your safety and for the, for the longer time of duration of your shower. 
all right and then as a, just a little digress on the same showers apart from talking about uh, shocks you also need to make sure that you open up enough water to flow through the shower because very because very little water will make the element in your shower to to cut because it is only water that keeps the element anything any element of water without enough enough water will break it and that means you will spoil your shower all right so open enough water not too much not too little because too much water also will not heat up effectively otherwise that is what i had for you today about showers